Hey. There you go. Listen, I was wondering, have you figured out what that secret ingredient is yet to rowing for calories? Whether it's changing the damper setting or rowing really hard one stroke and then taking the next stroke off? No? Well, here's why. When it comes to rowing for calories, we've been perceiving it wrong for a long time. Things that we already understand. To help us understand rowing for calories, it helps if we were to just start with something that we already understand, like driving. If I'm driving in the United States and I'm driving at 60 miles an hour, and then I move to the UK, I move to the other side of the road, I sit on the opposite side of the car, but I'm driving at 60 miles an hour in its equivalent kilometers per hour, I'm still moving at the same velocity. The only thing that changes is the unit of measurement. To operate the car, I still have to accelerate, I still have to brake, and I still have to understand how to turn the steering wheel. The car still operates the same, and the car's still moving at the same velocity. It's just in a different unit of measurement. So when it comes to rowing, we've been thinking about calories all wrong. We're looking at it as if we have to drive the car differently. But what we're really doing is converting the unit of measurement, and that's it. So let's try something else you know, running. If you run 1,600 meters in six minutes, you just ran a mile in six minutes. What we're getting at here is that the unifying factor is that to accomplish these tasks, just as if we're rowing, we don't want to change the basic mechanics, settings, or what we normally do. If you're driving your car, you drive it the same, even if you're in kilometers per hour or miles per hour. If you are running, you're still going to use perfect technique and you're going to run your absolute best and you will reach the same distance in the same time. When I'm on this machine, the only thing that changes is the unit of measurement. I'm not going to change my technique just because the unit of measurement has changed. So it's not surprising then that there's confusion between these units, but really to clarify, all you need to do is understand the relationship between the units. Now, the question was never how to row for calories. The question was, how do you convert calories into a unit of measurement that you already understand? Now, distance is simply a factor of how fast we go and for how long. So, the faster we go within the same period of time means that we will go further. And Calories are just a unit of energy. So, when we are thinking about calories, think of it in energy, we are simply thinking about our output over time. This is our conversion of any unit of measurement that you already understand in rowing, split distance, and converting it into calories. All we're trying to do is optimize our output over time to give us a greater energy expenditure. So to play this through in an example that may make more sense to you, let's take a look at a, an example athlete that we have. Let's call him Vic. We ask Vic, an athlete of ours who's rowed before and who understands how to row for distance or split. That's what he's used to using as his unit of, units of measurement to row a 60 calorie piece. 60 calories for time as fast as possible. And we ask him for his absolute honest best effort. He agrees and he goes at the test. He ends up with a time of 425.5, rowing at 814 calories per hour average with an average split of 2 minutes and 12.8 seconds and a total distance of 1,000 meters. Now this is, according to Vic, his absolute best effort for 60 calories. Now, we also know 
because Vic is an athlete of ours, that he has rode a thousand meters for time before. Where we can draw this connection is that we see he achieved a thousand meters for this 60 calories. So we take a look at Vic's thousand meter test that he's done. And what we find is that for a thousand meters for time, he actually rose a thousand meters in three minutes and 49 seconds at a 154.5 split, which equates to 1100 calories per hour average and ends up earning 70 calories per hour. Now he doesn't know these numbers because he's never gone into the memory before or rode this distance with calories on the screen. So he simply didn't understand these units of measurements because he's never seen them on the monitor. So when we asked Vic to row this 60 calorie piece, he didn't have any understanding of what his calories per hour were going to be or how long it was going to take because he had never rode this distance looking at calories per hour or calories. So being the intrigued athlete that Vic is, he asked us to run the numbers on this information. If he had rode his 154.5 split or 1100 calories per hour for 60 calories, what would that look like if he were to row it for 60 calories? This brings us to what his true absolute effort is for 60 calories if he were to understand his units of measurements. He would be able to row 60 calories at a 154.5 split or 1100 calories per hour. He would actually row 60 calories in 3 minutes and 16.3 seconds and a total distance of 857 meters. That's a difference of 1 minute and 9.2 seconds and 143 meter difference. He actually gets to row fewer meters because he rowed faster and all because he understands the unit of measurements. He didn't row differently. We simply applied his understanding of split. We converted that into understanding calorie and we can then take that and figure out what you can actually perform for a max effort test. It's simply understanding the connection between the units of measurement. Once you have that, that's the magic trick to understanding calories for rowing. Guys, this is Dark Horse Rowing signing off. Thanks for joining us. Make sure that you sign up for the Hustler's Guide to Rowing where you guys will get our latest blog article and video every Tuesday morning in your inbox. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Good. You're doing great, Tyler. Good. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do one arm. I'm gonna try to do one arm.